Lone Ranger. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. I haven't seen that wagon since it hauled us out from Missouri. Yeah, it's full of furniture. What's she up to now? Well, she'll tell us soon enough. She'll tell us, all right. You've been telling us how to breathe for as long as I can remember. No sense getting riled about it. Just don't forget how much we owe her. And don't you forget how much she owes us. We turned over to her just about every nickel from every job. Now you know she's just holding that money for all of us. We've been accumulating loot for over a year now. I say it's time we share some. There'll be no cash sharing. There's the Sawtell brand. Right now, it's carried by a mangy handful of scrub ponies. Now, we keep listening to Aunt Maggie, and one day it'll mark the biggest herd in the Northwest, and all three of us will share that. And yeah, that's how you and I want it. But she still hasn't said that's how it'll be. Come in. <laughs> oh, you're a fine sight for these tired old lives. Mm. Sure good to see you again, Aunt Maggie. We come soon as we got your message. Well, you ain't missing out of my cook about it. <laughs> Uh, how are you, people? Just fine, Aunt Maggie. Why don't you wash your neck now and again? My, but you're an untidy boy. Uh, we brought all our belongings, like you said, Aunt Maggie. Were you figuring us to move in here with you again? Well, in a way, Benjamin. I thought you didn't want anyone to know we were your nephews. That was my plan. So far, no one's connected us. They'd never think to search this house for the loot from your holdups. And why'd you have us bring all our goods? Haven't you got another job lined up first? Oh, my, yes. The Wells Fargo payroll is in their safe this morning. It's there every Saturday morning, waiting for the stage to pick it up. Oh, well, that's better. What Fargo office do you want us to go after this time? The one in Sandstone. Sandstone? Are you crazy? You moved us all over the state, Aunt Maggie, but we never hit Sandstone. You didn't want to operate so close to this farm. Well, it doesn't matter anymore, boys. You saw the wagon outside the house, didn't you? Oh, you mean we're pulling out? That's right. I've already sold the farm. The new people are taking possession in the morning, and we're on to a new state. But why? Why? Well, for one thing, it's getting a little warm around here. People are getting riled up about the two masked bandits. You boys have got yourself a reputation. That's your doings, Aunt Maggie. You sure planned our jobs good. And don't ever forget it. Anyways, I'm not getting any younger. I think it's time we moved on and spent some of the stolen money, hmm? I'm for that. Now, wait a minute. You mean this is the last job we're going to pull in this state? That's right. We'll be on our way by nightfall. Well, you should have told us before, because I don't want to leave here. Well, I got a girl. Well, that's just too bad, Peter, because you're not going to see her again. Well, now, I got some say around here. You got no say, boy, you ungrateful child. That's right, Pete. You know Aunt Mag took us in when we were a couple of orphans. She gave us a home since we were knee-high to a snake. Well, I'm not arguing that. I should guess not, and you're not arguing that I educated you along practical lines. If I hadn't taught you how to ride and shoot and steal, you'd been hung or in jail long ago. We're lucky she raised us right. And kept you right. If I hadn't planned these jobs, you'd been caught by now. Well, I'm not ungrateful, Maggie. Well, then how come you're arguing against me, boy? I just want a little more time. Time is costly in this business. Hit and be somewhere else when they look. You'll hit sandstone in the morning, and we'll be somewhere else when they look for the thieves. Yes, Aunt Maggie. Mm-hmm. Oh, Benjamin. You're a good boy. Come on, stick out your fist. These are for you, Benjamin. <laughs> Something nice and warm against the cold up north where we're going. Gee, they're sure pretty, Aunt Maggie. Mm, well, now you better get along. Your horses must be spent, so cut out two fresh ones from the corral. Any special orders? The same method that you use in the horse set hold up. Peter, you go through the front door. Benjamin, you go through the back, and you box them in. No shooting unless you have to. Gunfire rouses a posse too fast. Yes, sir. Thanks, Aunt Maggie. Look out for each other, boys. Yes, yes ma'am. I'll cut out the horses you toss the packs in the wagon. Hey, Benny. You ever stop to think about Aunt Maggie? How maybe she took us in so she could raise herself a couple of gunmen? Just remember, without her, we're nothing. Sometimes I think because of her, we're nothing. <laughs> Oh, 
force is ready. We go now, Kimasabi? Tana, we must stop those two masked bandits who have been terrorizing this area. Now, where we look, all trails have been cold by the time we get there. No way to tell where them rob next. Yeah, that's true. I've been thinking about the town of Sandstone. Sandstone? That only place they're not robbed. Exactly. The only place. Every other town in this area has been struck by these men. Only Sandstone has been bypassed. You think maybe masked bandits not want trouble in Sandstone? If they live there, they wouldn't like investigations so close to home. Only the omission of crimes in that town alone must mean something. Let me see. Tana, we'd better look into this. Good. Maybe we surprise them. I hope so. We must stop them. Let's go. Sheriff, I win. <laughs> oh, I have to stop this, Matt. Here I sit with you every Saturday to keep you from being robbed, and I wind up with you robbing me. Oh, I appreciate your company, even if I don't need your protection. <laughs> well, I swear I'd stop coming, except the one day I stayed away, somebody'd probably stick the place up and clean out your safe. Oh, it's an education. I'm teaching you the fine art of car plan. <laughs> <laughs> you sure change a game of chance. No try, Sheriff. You're that masked pair of bandits we've been hearing about. Get that safe open. Be quick about it. So you finally got around the sandstone. Shut right? up. Get it open. All right. Here, open your mouth. What are you going to do about him? Leave him. He'll be out long enough. Got away, huh? They went through that door. They figured you'd be out for a while. Well, my hat must have taken up most of the shock. You raise a posse, I have to follow. I'm going after them before they get away. Watch your step, Sheriff. Right. They're plumb mean. I thought I had him before, back in the office. He's tough. Well, come on, let's get out of here. Oh, I gotta make sure he's finished. Well, you can't go down there now, Benny. There'll be a posse along in a few minutes. I gotta take that chance. If he gets back on that horse, he'll follow us to Aunt Maggie's farm. You stay here. Come on. Ah. Why'd you want to kill that man? Now, oh, just a minute. You're wearing a mask. Maybe you and me are on the same side. I doubt that. You'd better answer my questions. Work them out for yourself, mister. We're going to take you back and see if you're going to be held for murder. Now get going. Hold it. All right, move along. Man. Of all the fool 
fool tricks. Go on after those bandits single-handed. Why, well, you're lucky to be alive. <laughs> Good thing I remember them outlaws clear. Otherwise, I'd think I'd beat you in our card game and you shot me out of pure orderliness. <laughs> Who's that? That's one of the bandits. Well, then you did catch one. <laughs> Not me. They did. But he's got a mask on. Perhaps this will help to identify me, Sheriff. A silver bullet. Silver? Well, what do you know? That's who it is, all right. Our posse ran into him and Tonto. They were riding to town with you slung across the saddle. You took a bullet in the shoulder, Sheriff. We caught that man trying to kill you. Well, I owe you something, mister. But that's no surprise. A lot of other people are indebted to both of you. We're glad to be of help, sir. Lucky you were in the neighborhood, mister. But how did you know they were going to rob Sandstone? <sighs> that was an accident. We were coming to find out why Sandstone had never been robbed by these outlaws. Can't ask that question anymore. No, we can't. I thought they might be citizens of your town. But nobody can identify this man. I've never seen him around these parts before. And he's not talking. Find anything in his belongings might identify him? Well, we searched his clothes and his saddle. Weren't nothing. Except this, Sheriff. I noticed this was the brand on the horse he was riding. Oh, Maggie Sawtell's brand. That's what it is, all right. That poor old woman has only a few head of cattle and some horses. Sawtell? Did you say she lives in this area? Well, that's right. She lives all alone, about five miles east off the road. What do you know about her, Sheriff? Oh, nothing much. She, she keeps pretty much to herself. She moved in the neighborhood two years ago. And she's moving out most any day. Maggie Sawtell sold her farm. Oh? You said she was an old woman. Does she handle the farm work all by herself? Yeah. But there's something about Maggie. She's not what I'd call weak. Well, it's not her muscles that are strong. She's sort of strong-willed and dominating. And that's the feeling you get from her. Perhaps Tano and I had better ride out to that farm. I'll go with you. You're no condition to ride, Sheriff. I suggest you stay here and watch your prisoner. His friend might try to help him escape. Well, you're right, I know. Go see if they bothered Maggie. Don't you worry. Adios, gentlemen. Good hunting, mister. I sure hope Maggie's all right. She'd better be. I tell you, fella, anyone touches that poor old woman, I'd see him hang, higher in a cloud. We ran into trouble, Aunt Maggie, bad trouble. They caught Benny. Did anybody follow you here? No, I've been doubling around. That's what took me so long. Did Benny have the money when they caught him? Well, no, I have it right here. But... Oh, you brought it right to your old Aunt Maggie. Oh, you're a good boy, Peter. What about Benny? Oh, poor Benjamin. Well, I taught him enough so he wouldn't get in a fix like this. Maybe jail can teach him something I couldn't. We can't run out on him now, Aunt Maggie. He's my brother. We're not your brother's keepers. He must have done something stupid or he wouldn't have got caught. Besides, there's only two of us now, Peter. What if Benny talks? <laughs> Benny won't talk. Not my Benjamin. He'd be too afraid to. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I reckon we'll miss Benjamin. He was a good boy. With a few changes, that'll fit you just fine, Peter. Thank you, Aunt Maggie. And there won't be any more misunderstandings between us, will there, boy? No, ma'am. All right, go and load that wagon. Be careful how you pile on the furniture. The rest of our loot's packed under the load. Go and start with that chair first. And do be careful, Peter. They're coming. Who's coming? The masked man and the engine, the two who caught Benny. I thought you covered your trail. Well, I did. They're coming this way, all right. Well, what are we going to do? I'll handle them. Give me one of your guns. Now get in the kitchen and hide yourself, and don't show yourself until I call. Well, what if they try and search the house? They won't. I'll see to that. Move! Give me some in. That looked like horse uncle, all right. We'd better be quiet. He may be holding the woman as hostage.
It looked quiet, Jim, Sammy. Yes, Tonto. Too quiet. We'll go inside and watch for trouble. Come in. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. Are you Maggie Sawtell? Yes. But are you out close? Now, please don't let this mask frighten you. We're friends of Sheriff Taylor. He was worried about your safety and asked us to look in on you. Oh, my goodness. I can take care of myself. Well, I'm sure you can. Two outlaws robbed the Wells Fargo office this morning. Oh, how terrible. We captured one of them. He was riding a horse bearing your brand. Well, how could that be? Unless he stole it. Wouldn't you know if one of your horses had been stolen? Well, I haven't been out of the corral today. I've been too busy getting ready to move. Then you don't know how that man got your horse? Well, of course not. I just told you. A horse belonging to the second outlaw is tied outside your house right now. I... You've been lying, haven't you, Mrs. Sawtell? <laughs> what else could I do? I couldn't turn Peter and Benjamin over to the sheriff. Are those the names of the two outlaws? My nephews. I brought them up like my own sons. I did the best that I could do, but it wasn't good enough. They turned bad. Then you know what they have done. I haven't seen them since I moved to this farm. And they rode in this morning and borrowed two horses and rode off again. I didn't know they were going to rob the Wells Fargo office. Tell us the rest, Mrs. Sawtell. Well, Peter came back this afternoon and he told me they'd gotten into trouble, that Benjamin was in jail. Then he took his own horse and he rode off. In which direction? East, past the corral. I just couldn't turn him in. He was like my own son. We should have no trouble following this trail, Tonto, if he rode away from here. We'll pick up this trail near the corral. Sorry we bothered you, ma'am. Oh, wait, uh... There's, uh, there's something else that you should know. Oh? What's that? Peter hid a sack in the woodshed just before he left, and from what you've told me, it might be the stolen money. Well, that's possible. We'd like to see that sack, if we may. I'll show it to you. Be right with you, Mrs. Sawtell. The nephew is still here. He wouldn't ride off without taking his saddle. Old woman lie plenty. Let's see what trick she's up to. Perhaps her nephew will show himself. Uh, me watch. Good. In here, mister. I'm not sure where he hid it. Probably among the kindling. Perhaps I can find it. Don't move, Jim. Not a sound out of you. Go on, get in there. Get in. Any time now. Me big fool. See bandit, forget a woman behind me. Don't blame yourself, Tonto. Neither of us suspected she had a gun. Walls, heavy wood, Kimisabi, can't break. Even if we could, they'd be waiting outside with their guns. Uh, maybe you shoot hinges off door. No, Tonto, that wouldn't help. The door is locked by a crossbeam latch. Listen. Peter, hitch the team to the wagon. It's past our leaving time. What are we going to do about them, Aunt Maggie? Don't you worry. We'll take care of them. Well, that masked man still has his guns. I'm not about to walk in there and face him. Don't fret. We won't have to go into the shed. Hitch the team to the wagon. And bring me the base of a kerosene lamp. She means to burn the shed. We have to find a way out. Tom, hand me that axe. Get out through a roof, Kimisami? We'll try. Can you make hole big enough for men to pass through? I think so, Tonto. But it'll make noise and attract their attention. You not worry about noise. We make plenty more. Good. <laughs> Go on, boys. Try and break down the door. Oh, well, good it'll do you. Go on, go on. Work up a sweat. I hitch the horses in, Maggie, and put your trunk in the back of the wagon so we're all set. Good. Here's your gun. Now start splashing some of that kerosene all over the shed. It's going to burn real pretty. What's the matter, boys? You're getting tired so soon? Go 
Lord, light it. Sheriff Tonto. Uh, next time he take easy job. Fight man. You fight woman. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you enough, mister. We'd have never thought of old Maggie Sawtell as being the brains behind these robberies. You'll see to the return of that stolen money we found in the wagon, Sheriff? Every last nickel. And you can bet the Sawtells will be put away for a good long time. In a way, I feel sorry for Pete and Benny. They never had a chance to be decent. Yeah, Maggie trained them to be outlaws. If they'd had a home and understanding parents, Maybe things would have been different. Well, no matter who's to blame, I don't mind admitting I'm glad the whole family's behind bars. That's the only safe place for the Sawtell family, that's sure. The Sawtell family would still be riding if it weren't for the masked man and that engine. Who were they? Don't you know? The Indian's name is Tonto, but the masked man, why, they call him the Lone Ranger. I don't kill 